Uh, my name is uh, uh, Coach Greg Aker. Uh, hello, everyone. That's that's going to eventually see this here. Um, I uh, I do the passing game um, at Hermantown High School. I, uh, I individually coach the wide receivers and the defensive backs as well. Uh, I am a, uh, a Wisconsin guy, and, and Hermantown is just across the bridge in Minnesota here, so um, pretty familiar with football around here, and I can take you through uh, some of the stuff that I do. I just kind of called this presentation uh, the concepts that we do in the past game and then uh, more technical stuff with route running, so uh, I'll walk you through it. But... Uh, just a quick background, not that, uh, not that anyone's super interested on um, and where I come from, but I'm, I'm a graduate, again, on the Wisconsin side, Superior High School. I'm a 2002 graduate. Uh, I had two different head coaches when I was in high school, which is important just because uh, we went from a wishbone uh, my sophomore and junior year. I was a wishbone running back, and then uh, my senior year, a coach came in, and we went, we went spread, so that was my that was my switch from uh, from wishbone running back to to wide receiver, and it's it's pretty safe to say probably if that coach didn't come in that senior year and I didn't I didn't see that position change, I I probably wouldn't have even pursued college football. So um, that was kind of a lucky coincidence there. Uh, I played at the University of Minnesota Duluth. I was a receiver at Duluth. We had two different head coaches there as well. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the talking point that kind of um, sort of molds some of the stuff that I do is, is I experienced four different offensive coordinators when I was in college. So there was a pretty steep learning curve. Um, I went in there as a freshman, um, and then we saw, um, you know, different offensive coordinators essentially the, the next three years after that. So um, – it was uh, it was a pretty steep learning curve, and I, I was able to to soak in a lot of stuff about the position and just kind of the fundamentals of um, of the pass game in general. Uh, I also played college baseball, so I wasn't there in the spring, which made which made things a little bit uh, more difficult. Actually, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, to play on the U.S. national team in 2007. Um, we represented the United States. We played in a tournament over in Japan, and uh, we played three games. Um, and came away with the gold medal there. So that was a cool experience. Played with a lot of Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, and uh, and NAIA guys that uh, I still talk to to this day. So that was a cool experience. Uh, coached at Superior High School in 2007. After I graduated from Minnesota Duluth, I coached receivers and defensive backs. Uh, and then I went to Little Falls High School, which is in central Minnesota. Um, and I coached there. From 2008 to 2011, I coached, uh, again, the receivers and the defensive backs and then uh, implemented some offensive pass game stuff. And I've been at Hermantown uh, ever since. Um, so from 2018, um, I got back into coaching. I've got two little kids here at home. And um, the semantics of all of that, the situation didn't really allow me uh, allow me to coach with with daycare and young kids and all of that stuff. So jump back into coaching uh, a couple of years ago now, and, and this will be year three coming up this fall. So that's kind of my quick background there. Again, not to saturate anything or um, much of this presentation with that, but uh, some of those experiences definitely mold uh, kind of what I do. <clears throat> so my coaching philosophy um, at Hermantown, now this is specific to, uh, to Hermantown High School. Um, getting back into coaching a couple of years ago, uh, and I'll get to this here in a second, Hermantown was basically all a run. Uh, they would throw the ball a very, very limited time. I would probably say two to three times a game max, and it was when the situation called for it. Um, so my philosophy at Hermantown, when I got back into coaching, uh, there was actually a head coach change as well. And I had to, uh, to kind of pitch my ideas to him, um, and, uh, and, and, and in a way sell myself being that, uh, I am definitely a pass first guy and, and Hermantown again, has a tradition of not, not throwing much at all. So I wanted to be explosive enough and diverse enough in the passing game to keep defensive on, uh, defenses honest, uh, those years where I didn't coach at Hermantown from, you know, 2012 to 2017, uh, Hermantown had really good football teams and, uh, and they actually made 
uh, a push deep into the playoffs um, and they were beat by a team because they weren't able to play from behind. Um, and I've had a lot of conversations with the head coach. It's just, it's just keeping defenses honest so they can't, you know, stack eight guys in the box, shut down what you do best, which in Herman Towns case, you know, oftentimes is, is a run game, you know, just to keep defensive on defenses honest, um, uh, goes a long ways. Uh, when you've got those skill position players and you run the ball, well, you know, uh, a solid pass game and an unpredictable, you know, offensive game plan is, is only going to help your run game too. So I just wanted to be explosive enough um, and diverse enough to keep defenses honest. It's not like we were going to go from run only to pass only, or, you know, like when I was a high school kid, we went from wishbone to throwing it, you know, 30 times a game. By no means are we doing that. Um, not that I, I'd be opposed to that, <laughs> but um, it was just, you know, sprinkling in, you know, things that I like to do and, and being more, more diverse as an offense overall. Um, another thing too that uh, I I tried to focus on from the get go was was player friendly terminology and a system approach to what they were al already doing. Um, I, I don't even feel bad in saying this, but you know it, it's from my experiences in the last few years here uh, at Hermantown, we're we're definitely a program that could develop more football smarts. And I wanted to keep it really, really simple at first. And last year, I, I, excuse me, two years ago, um, we were further behind the learning curve than we were this last year. And that was because, you know, we've got athletes that, you know, were used to it the year before, and now they had a second year of it, and they're only going to be better next year. So um, just a player-friendly terminology and a systems approach to keeping things simple because this was so foreign to kids that honestly never threw the ball or caught the ball. Uh, so they had very, very limited conceptual knowledge when it came to the pass game. And I still struggle with that. Uh, I still get frustrated by that, uh, you know, but that's, that's why I like to coach. And that's what, that's what makes it fun because late last year, uh, when we made our playoff run, we got beat in the section finals by a pretty good team. Um, we were doing a lot more things when we were, you know, week one, two, and three, and that, that just goes to show the kids were starting to get it. So. Uh, we, we definitely got better over the course of the season. And, and what I try to do each and every year is to, to start more simplistic. And then as teams are watching, you know, film and they're preparing for you, you just do a couple extra things to, uh, um, to diversify yourself. So we do more as the season progresses. So here's my thought process and some terminology here. Um, I do all of my stuff based on uh, a route tree. And this comes from kind of the time when I was with uh, uh, that US national team. And I think it was kind of a similar situation. You got a bunch of college kids to practice for two weeks out in California and boom, you're gonna go play in a, in a, in a world tournament you know, in Japan. So everything was structured based on numbers and, and a universal pass tree. So I think that was the easiest way for me to learn going back to college, you know, you got different offensive coordinators and you got names for this and names for that and names for this route and that route. I couldn't do that at the high school level and expect kids to, um, to do what I wanted them to do. So um, I took the more basic approach and I base everything off of numbers and, and, and that universal route tree. I'll show you here in a second. Uh, so at Hermantown, we're basically a hybrid wing T offense and we had already established offensive formations. So I just adapted what I do based on the formations that the kids have known for years. Again, we have a numerical play calling system. I'll show you some examples of that in here uh, in a second. Uh, we definitely manipulate a little bit with motions. We tend to do more of this towards the end of the year versus the beginning of the year. Uh, there's a lot of things that we did last year versus the year before. Um, you know, we just, again, evolved as an offense and, and what players were able to handle and understand. And that, again, comes with that football smarts and, and them understanding what I wanted them to do. We've got short motions in our offense. Um, an example, motion passed is simply, let's say you're in a pro formation and you've got, you know, you're a one by one. You've got a receiver on one side with a tight end, maybe, and you've got a receiver backside. You can send that receiver to the tight end side in motion, obviously, because he's off the ball. And just to, to put a little wrinkle in offense, you'll have him motion past 
that single receiver that started on the other side of the formation. And all that does is just give that quick little split second confusion on the defensive side as far as the cornerback thinking, which which guy's my responsibility, or that linebacker thinking, oh gosh, do I keep bumping out? Do I follow that guy all the way past, you know, that receiver that set? Um, so we call that motion past. Uh, we don't see too much man coverage, quite honestly. In fact, we hardly see it ever. Um, we were caught off guard by a team, gosh, was this last year? No, oh, two years ago. That was a very, very athletic defense, and they just tried to take our, our playmakers away, and they, they simply locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and they showed none of that leading into that week. So um, that was kind of a learning experience for me just to have that, that tool in the toolbox to have uh, things work against man coverage, but that'll be in the future. And it's not always easy with personnel either. Uh, we, we very rarely have sub packages or packages based on our formation. Um, we did a little bit of that when we would go doubles at the end of last year, which uh, our coach finally uh, allowed me to do to have four guys on routes, which was definitely unheard of um, at Hermantown High School leading up, uh, leading up to last year. But we had a special package for those four receivers because I wanted four specific guys on routes. Uh, but other than that, usually it's guys just changing their positions because kids are on the field all the time. We've got a ton of kids that go both ways. Uh, nine through 12 last year, our numbers were like in the fifties. Um, you know, so we got a lot of kids playing a lot of different things and, and they rarely come off the field. So that's an adjustment that I had to make. I, I, I really couldn't talk to kids a whole lot in between plays, in between drives. You know, there's no TV timeouts, obviously, you know, so it was kind of coaching on the fly. Oftentimes we were lucky enough to have a QB the last two years uh, that only played one way. So I could get in his ear virtually anytime we were on defense. So, um, but with my, with my receivers, you know, those are the kids in the secondary. So it's, it's halftime adjustments, it's conversations, you know, anytime, there's a lull, but other than that, you know, these kids are, are always on the field. So it's not always easy with our personnel. Uh, stack releases, I like to. Uh, we would do that. We did that at the end of last year into the playoff run. We actually won our section, qualified for the state tournament. Um, and we showed uh, just a, a stack formation. And again, it, it creates that confusion that was huge in the section final game a couple of years ago. We hit a couple big third downs just by showing that stack formation on the edge with our receivers. So it's, you know, I, I'm not reinventing the wheel here by any means, but this is, you know, a lot of the stuff you'll see on a Saturday or a Sunday, and many of you guys are probably doing it at the high school level too. Uh, so I'll print this out for my receivers. It'll go right in the playbook, and this is what I want them to focus on. Um, imagine two years ago when they came into fall camp, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, we're going to throw the ball, and you need to learn how to do it. You need to learn what the plays mean. Uh, you know, kids, the, their heads were spinning. So I tried to uh, reel myself back in a little bit. And I said, OK, first you need to hear the play call. OK, once you hear the play call, because I, one of my, one of my biggest pet peeves, I, I, when somebody's not in the right spot, it, it, I, can, I can think of probably three or four different um, instances last year where we committed a big time turnover and it was because a kid wasn't where he was supposed to be or it was because a kid ran a wrong route. And that, that really gets to me. So I really have them hone in. You need to hear the play call. And I tell my, my, my receivers, my skill guys, leave the huddle as soon as you hear the play call. Go get set. We can't wait for you to get set because everybody else is getting set at the line of scrimmage. Hear the play call, get out of the huddle. You don't need to hear you know, it beyond once. Once you hear the play call, what it's on, get out of the huddle, get set up. And that plays into the alignment. That was a huge frustration I had two years ago. Uh, and even last year, you know, you'd have a kid on a slant route and he's five yards inside the numbers. Or you'd have, you know, a kid on a, uh, on a, on a comeback and he leaves himself, you know, three yards to the sidelines. So leave the huddle after you hear the play call, get yourself set. Um, and I'll get to stemming here in a second. And um, I know a lot of you guys probably coach receivers and it's pretty universal language, but you can manipulate your alignment so that, you know, an educated defensive back that watches film doesn't know what, what route you're going to be running. Uh, proper stance. We work on stances and starts every single day. I tell my guys, um, 
whatever's comfortable for you. Oftentimes they'll say you're inside foot forward, right? Um, you're on the balls of your feet. You're not flat footed. Um, myself for an example, I, I'm really left hand dominant and I'm left foot dominant. And this maybe hurt me in college, um, with, uh, with, with opponents that watched a ton of film, I was most comfortable with my right foot forward always, regardless of if I was in the slot on the outside, um, uh, if I was on the left side of the formation, the right side of the formation, I would always have my right foot forward because I was so left foot dominant that I like to push off of that left foot. It just felt really, really natural to me. And the only time I would have my left foot forward is when I was running a slant from the right side of the formation. Um, so I'd be curious to know if any opponents ever picked up on that. The only time I had my left foot forward was on the right side of the formation, the defensive defense is left when I was on a slant route. So I just tell my guys, whatever's comfortable for you. All right. No false steps. Your eye level shouldn't change. You shouldn't have any false steps. You shouldn't be like, you know, a machine where you're cranking the gears to get going. All right. You shouldn't have to sink your hips before you take off. All right. So you got to get comfortable. I don't care what you do with your hands. We don't ever see press coverage, press coverage. I've had my, you know, I, I, I would have my guys, um, with their, with their arms and elbows, at least at 90 degrees so they can fend off hand fighting, but we never see that. So I tell my guys, do you run with, do you run with your arms to your side? No, you don't. So why would you start your stance that way? So get your arms loose, comfortable, uh, and get a good stance and start. Know the snap count. Um, I'm not one to yank a guy if he jumps off sides, but I definitely remember it. Um, eyes in at the football. If you can't remember what the snap is on, there's no excuses for, for skill guys and receivers to, to jump off sides. I'll get into stemming here in a little bit and then manipulating the defense with your eyes a little bit too. So here's our route tree, pretty universal. There's probably some variations to what you have seen if, if any of you guys that uh, uh, that are watching this uh, use something similar. Rule of thumb, so you'll see down in the right-hand corner here, the ball is to the inside. This would be a receiver on the left side of the formation from the offense's perspective. All even numbers are in cuts. And I'm not a math guy, I'm a social studies guy. And I was told our head coach, he's a math guy, zero is in fact an even number. So the rule still applies. So our zero is our hitch route. Our one is called, uh, we call this an arrow route. Two is a slant, three is an out route, four is our curl. Five's a comeback, six, you can probably see it just underneath here, that's our dig. Seven is a corner, eight is a post, and nine is a go. And there's a ton of variations off of each of those, and I'll get into that. But again, um, high school kids that are that are trying to learn this stuff and they're studying their playbook, you know, in between practices and, you know, in the warm days of August, general rule of thumb, even numbers and in cut, and that usually gets them um, – pretty far in, in learning. Um, and you'll notice too, aside from your zero, the route depths get deeper as, as the numbers climb. So it's, it's, it's not hard. Uh, it's just like anything else. You study it for a day or two and it should be like second nature to you. Uh, we were able to pull uh, a couple athletes from other sports that, uh, that didn't play football um, leading up into this past year. And that's, what's kind of nice about throwing the ball a little bit too, as you get, the more athletic types in high school, your basketball players, even your soccer players. We had a kicker that he, he probably could have played receiver for us, but we didn't want to get him dinged up. You know, he's a good soccer player and he was one of the captains. And um, But we get those skill type athletes that want to come out and catch footballs, which is kind of nice too. So we're starting to pull kids that might have been, you know, a single sport athlete and they're willing to try football because holy cow, Hermitown actually throws the ball a little bit. So um, some of them would wear, uh, especially in August before the games would get going, they'd wear their route tree right on, right on a wristband, not drawn out like this, but you know, zero hitch, one arrow, you know, not the actual tree. So here's an example of a play call. Okay. And again, and everything's numeric. So this is our twins formation. Okay. We call twins left. The twins, uh, the twin receivers are to the left. We call them to the formation. Um, this would be our fullback and this would be our halfback. Uh, and this is our tight end backside. So twins left zero seven. If I go back 
Okay, again, our zero is our hitch, our seven is our corner. This is the simple hitch corner concept. Twins left zero seven, numerically from left to right. And it's always from left to right, regardless of formation, regardless of what side of the formation that receiver's on. Okay, twins left zero seven tells this outside receiver he's on a hitch and that inside receiver that he's on a corner. Wing right 991. Now this is where kids get confused a little bit here. The backfield is always tagged if we send them out on a route. So I would maybe call H arrow or F arrow or F Texas or H Texas, or he might motion him out and call it an H go. So don't even worry about the backfield. The running backs have no responsibility in the pass game as far as catching balls, unless they are tagged. So the, the fullback is tagged with the F tag, the H, the halfback is tagged with that H tag. So wing right, this is our base formation in Hermantown for a million years before we started to throw the ball a couple years ago. Wing right 991, okay? Who are your eligible pass catchers? This tight end, this tight end, and this wing. So that's a go route. We would call that a seam from the tight end position. Another seam from the tight end position is on an arrow. More than likely, we would be trying to hit one of these verticals. We would make the safety pick. The corner would probably carry this. To avoid all of that, we'd probably motion this back out if we truly wanted uh, inside vertical look. We'd motion this back out, maybe pull that corner, and then it's take your pick. Whatever way the safety isn't cheating, you clear that outside linebacker, and then boom, you hit a quick seam up the middle. So that's wing right, 991. Pro right motion away 22 H arrow. So here's our pro right formation. Our motion, like when we tag it motion, that applies to our running back. He's motioning away from the football. If we motion him across, he would come across the formation. 22 H arrow. So here's your eligible pass catcher. And this is where the tight end can get confused. He's thinking that he's on a slant. We would never run a slant from the tight end position. You've got a two a two and your H is on an arrow and our tight end knows through chalk talk, just like this, that he is staying into block. So that's a, an example of a slant arrow combo. Here's two 12 H arrow notice here. So here's 22 H arrow. He's on a slant. He's on a slant. That's our two and our two and our H is on an arrow. Now the tight end knows two 12 H arrow that he's on an arrow as well. So this is just mirrored routes. Pro right motion away, 212 H arrow. What the head coach and I do is we have a play card. I'll call run plays, he'll call run plays, he'll call pass plays, I'll call pass plays. I usually radio into him when I want to throw or I want to do something, you know, in the passing game. Um, but just so you know that opposing coaches aren't trying to tip us off, we'll each call, you know, run and pass game. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is mirrored route, so you've got slant arrow both both ways here. And a good quarterback would know which side to go. All right, um, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit here. Um, I was worried about uh, not talking not talking enough, and now I'm thinking I'm talking too much here. But here's here's some coaching points with our hitch. Alignment is big. You don't want to be too tight. Uh, it was two years ago. Um, it wasn't a hitch route, but we threw a hitch like route to the boundary and the outside backer undercut it and he took it 99 yards the other way for a touchdown and it put him right back in the game late. So you need to be concerned about alignment, stay away from that outside linebacker. Um, it's not as vital with proper spacing during the route. And I'll get to that more. That's called stemming, right? You want to stem the defender and I'll show you, I'm going to, I'm going to try to play some video for you here. Um, and I'll just let it run the bar that kind of pauses it and plays it kind of blocks when it blocks my, um, tools that I can use in the video. So I'm just going to let it run, but you're going to see the very first clip. Cause I watched this ahead of time. It's from two years ago. Kid runs a hitch. The defender, uh, is probably two or three yards inside and the kid runs straight vertical. Well, what, what's that going to do for you? So you're running straight vertical and you're going to run a hitch into the, in, into the defender. Why not stem the defender, square him up. So he's threatened on his inside and outside shoulder and then run a proper hitch. Um, and I'll, I'll try to show that you want to sell vertical on a hitch that's universal. 
Uh, identify defender alignment pre-snap, which helps with your stem. For us, six yards back to five is the norm. I tell kids, show hands. You need to get your head around quick because the ball is going to be on you, especially with proper timing. Work back to the quarterback until you get the football. You might catch a hitch at three yards. That's fine with me. You want to run away from the defender. Uh, I teach beat the drum at the top of the route. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have film that shows kind of what we do at practice. We do not, we do not videotape our practices. Um, just to give you guys an idea, our high school enrollment is like 630. So we're not an overly big school. Um, like I said, we've got between 50 and 60 kids, nine through 12, but uh, historically a good football program um, in, uh, in Northern Minnesota. But anyways, where I was going with that, beat the drum. I tell them to beat the drum. I don't know if you guys can see my hands. Yep, I can see myself. I want to beat the drum at the top of the road. I want to sink my chin, and that helps me get out of my break. I don't like loose hands. All right? Keep your arms tight. Like a sprinter. Track. Snap your head to the QB. Get your hands ready because the ball is going to be on you. Work back to the quarterback until you get it. After the catch, quick move, get upfield. I had way too many kids catch hitches, and they blend right into the linebackers looking to take their heads off, make a quick move, get upfield. Um, and there's actually a, 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 a clip from our uh, best playmaker two years ago that just makes a quick inside jerk with his head. And I told him that I said, the first throw is going to be you. I said, we're going to get you a hitch on the edge. It was super, super sloppy conditions. We're actually putting in um, field turf, not as I speak, because it's dark out, but tomorrow they'll be hard at it and that'll be ready for the fall. Um, but traditionally we've been, uh, um, especially after a rain and the fact that soccer plays on our field, it, it's, it's not good field conditions oftentimes, uh, especially with moisture. So I told him, I said, first throw is going to be to you. It's going to be a hitch. I want you to give a little head fake inside, quick spin to the outside. And it, you know, the defender um, fell down and uh, we had a big gainer first, uh, first play of our homecoming game two years ago. Uh, some variations on our zero route. We've got a hitch and go, and then I call it a rail hitch. What a rail hitch is, it looks like you're running almost like a wheel. Um, and then you kind of pull the chain and you settle in that soft zone. I call that a rail hitch. We didn't, we didn't run that a whole lot in the last two years. That was more college stuff. Let's see if this works out. All right. So here is a clip from two years ago. All this film is from two years ago. Look at the kid on the left side of the screen, number 22. He's our best player. That's not a good hitch. I don't know if you guys saw that. I'm going to play it one more time for you, and then I'm just going to let this run. The kid in the boundary gets a football, but watch the guy to the field. He's got to stem this kid to the inside. If that hitch is thrown, that kid might pick it off. Kid that caught that football was our kicker, slash, caught some balls for us. This kid hops windows. I want to show you this, too. Look at his alignment. He's running a hitch from inside the hash. See how it blocks it? I can't, I can't go back. But he had to hop windows because it was way too cloudy and it was all based on his alignment. Here's a hitch and go. Like eight seconds left in the football game to win. And you guys will have the ability to go back and watch that. Here it is from the field view, hitch and go. That was their best cover corner on the edge. This was the game that they played man coverage. They followed our playmakers everywhere. That's a great throw and catch. Again, that was, there's your homecoming game. Defender slips. That was your big gainer. Kid on the right side of the screen is going to catch the football, number 22. He could have played college football, decided not to walk on. Great athlete, three-sport kid. You can see how sloppy the field conditions are. Kids have to pitter patter to get their feet. Section final. Great run after the catch. That was a game winning touchdown right there. Well, there's our hitch. Our arrow route, okay, alignment. You want to cheat inside. You don't want to have a too wide of an alignment. We tell our quarterbacks, why make a 30-yard throw for a gain at two, right? A lot of trouble can happen there. Uh, it's only ran in our offense from the slot or out of the backfield. We will never run an arrow route uh, from an edge guy. Uh, less stem importance, we just want you to get out. Get to your spot, get to your spot, get to your spot. You're going to out 
run, the outside linebacker or the safety. All right. The only time we're in trouble and we probably look it off and hopefully we wouldn't throw it as if that outside linebacker uh, lines up outside of us. And that tells me you're too tight if the outside linebacker is overcompensated um, and taking the edge away. Let's say, unless they're thinking down in distance, we're going to throw it. Uh, expect the ball out of your break. Get your head around, get your eyes around. Uh, I coach speed cuts, and this comes from my college days. Uh, I had an offensive coordinator my junior year, um, and he emulated basically everything, the, uh, the show on turf, the Rams, the uh, old St. Louis Rams that put up a million points. He emulated everything they did in regards to route running. Uh, they were on turf, so it's it's a double cut speed out versus throttling down and getting to your out. So our arrow is two forty five degree cuts, and we call that a speed cut. So it's two pound steps by your inside foot, if you can envision that. I'm not going to get up and show you, but uh, flat to the line of scrimmage. Don't drift. Drifting causes bad things to happen. That's when defenders undercut it, leads to incompletions or. Uh, even worse interceptions. Variation off of our arrow route, we call it a return. When an outside backer sees arrow, 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 and he'll fly to his spot and fly to his spot and fly to his spot. And we see a lot of good teams that have good coverage linebackers. The return route is right back underneath him. So you get on your arrow, that outside backer flies to it, and you get right back underneath. So it's an inside throw, but that's a variation to our arrow. And then a wheel, your arrow, turned into a wheel, which is pretty self-explanatory. Here's a drill that you guys could do if, if any of this stuff interests you. Uh, it, it's, it's a three cone, uh, four cone drill essentially. So everyone's gonna start here. Uh, we're gonna run up to this cone. You're gonna plant and drive, okay? Almost like you're working a release. On this cone here, you're gonna double cut speed cut. You're gonna plant and drive at this cone. So in this case, stick your left foot in the ground and then I'm gonna throw you a football and you're gonna finish between the two cones just works on that agility, that, that, that quickness. I'm just gonna let this run and you guys can, if I, if I see anything that I notice, I'll mention it. But again, my taskbar covers up my ability to start and stop some of this stuff. So there's an arrow to our tight end. That tight end leading into the year probably didn't catch any balls his entire football career. Really, really good defensive end. Another kid that played both ways. This is wing left, this is our base formation. Better football and that's probably a bigger gainer. Don't block a guy in the back like our receiver did. This game was played at a neutral site week two. Gain of 10. Arrow should be easy. This is too deep. Great throw, great catch, so that's too deep. Get down the line of scrimmage. I'd rather have you catch it at zero yards than six yards. Watch how deep he gets. He'll start to drift. He's right here. Right here. And that kid starts to chase. I'm willing to bet that was a third down. That ball should have been there a lot sooner. That's a bad throw. Good run after the catch. All right, some slant stuff. Proper stance and footing, like I said, um, we're one, two, three, and cut. So your foot matters. Your inside foot should be forward. Um, I mentioned that at the top of this video, kind of with my um, personal story there. Find a window. Your window defenders pre-snap is what I, uh, I tell my kids to look for. Okay, know where you're going to catch the football. It might not be right out of your break. It might after. It might be after that linebacker clears. And here's where this. And again, um, kind of frustrating, right? If 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 I've got a receiver on a slant and I've got a slot receiver on an arrow, that receiver should know that that outside linebacker is going to clear and chase that arrow, and that's when you're going to get the football. It's going to go right behind his ear hole. But those are the frustrations of not only high school kids, but our program, you know, lack of throwing the ball for, you know, more than a couple years. Kids don't pick up on that until we, uh, until we do it a lot, you know, so find your window defenders pre-snap, know what the play is, know where you're going to get the football. Um, 
why I have potential blitz, uh, blitz pressures here. The only reason I have that is, is just identifying your defender in case he's coming on a blitz. So let's say we have a, you know, we've got, we've got a slant arrow called and, and you've got a safety at eight yards right over the top and your outside linebackers near the line of scrimmage five yards inside of you. Well, he might be coming on a blitz, right? Again, that's that football sense. Um, and that's your combination route to a company. I talked about that again, football smarts, stem your defender. Okay. If he's got inside shade, you have to square him up with your stem and what a stem is again. Um, and Nick, I know, I know you coach wideouts. I've seen your bio too, right? You got to square that defender up to threaten him to the inside or to the outside. If I just run full speed ahead, right. And he's to my inside shade, my inside isn't threatened. He's, he's, he's just going to laugh at you, right? You're not threatening his inside at all. He wants you to run an outside route because he's set up for it. He's blocking you off to the inside and he wants to carry your outside route. So you have to stem that defender, square him up so he doesn't know which direction you're going to go. Um, you know, I'm a little biased here, but I, 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 I'm a Vikings fan and I love watching Adam Thielen run routes. I used to love Stefan Diggs run routes, right? Two of the best route runners in the, in the game. And it, it's, it's second nature. You have to do it. I always tell my kids, don't run your routes in sand, right? You've got cleats on, you're running on turf, or you're running on grass, right? Be an athlete. No route should look the same two times that you're running. So um, just some things that I always say, don't run your route in sand. My kids have heard that a hundred times. <clears throat> Everything should be done full speed, okay? Again, we're not throttling down and making cuts. We're talking speed cut here. Um, manipulate with your eyes. Sometimes I like to stare the defender right in his eyes. Sometimes I like to look where I'm going. And sometimes I like to look where I'm not going, if that makes any sense. So let's say I'm on a speed out, right? Sometimes I like to look to the sideline. So that next time when I'm looking inside, that defender thinks maybe I'm going inside. So play games with your eyes. All that means, guys, is don't run, this, don't run a route the same way twice, okay? And there it is. <laughs> I didn't even see that down there. We aren't running on the beach. That's preached to my players. Don't run routes on the sand, right? Um, variations to that. A Colorado is a route that we love. It's just a slant. And then you get outside, you put your in, you stick your inside foot in the ground and you drive back to the sideline. Great goal line route, great short yardage route, great route after you complete a couple of slants. That cornerback's going to try to jump it and you've got nothing but the sidelines because you put the brakes on and you get flat. And then a slant and go, we call a sluggo. Again, I'm going to let this play. I don't know if you guys can pick up on this, but this blocks my ability to pause it. That was a second window slant here. I got on my kid a little bit here. His name's Elliot. Again, our best football player, best athlete. He jogs this route. Watch him. He's right here. That's not his full speed, not even close. That's a second window throw, though. <clears throat> I'm going to play that back. Please let me know. I can't. Oh, right at the top. I can watch this. Okay. He's right here. Watch this stem stems his outside shoulder. This was a really, really good cover corner too. You'll see his numbers. You'll see him stem outside and it just flips his hips enough to be able to get inside and catch a touchdown. Outside stem. See the kid didn't even play it. One thing we need to get better at is play action. You'll see here, um, just to give you guys some perspective here. So we went from, from running all the time to all of a sudden throwing the football and we didn't really disguise our run and pass very well. So if we were throwing the football, the defense knew we were throwing the football. There was no element of surprise in regards to play action. I'm gonna see if I can rewind this just as a tad here. This is something we put in this week because the teams were jumping it. Watch our quarterback. He just shows a subtle ball fake that freezes this safety so we can fit this touchdown in. Watch. Shows the ball. That kid can't get there. See that? Again, you guys can rewind it. See? There's, this is the team that played man on us. That's their best athlete. That's our best athlete. Gave us fits for a while. Good throw and catch. Our quarterback two years ago was a defensive end that 
blew out both his ACLs, had never played quarterback in his life. Smartest kid on the football field by far. Not, uh, not the most gifted in regards to arm strength. Um, he was a statue back there. Couldn't expect him to take off and rod or evade pressure. But uh, again, we qualified for the state tournament and um, won a bunch of football games. So it was good to see. from the end zone view. Okay, now watch this here. Watch, watch where this kid carries his motion. So we got a receiver behind my bubble here. He's up here. This kid knows he's on a slant. Get out here. Take this kid all the way out here, and then you're getting the ball right out of your break. This safety's not even in play, but now we got to throw it to the next window because look how tight he is. He's got to wait for that safety to go worked out, but again, football sense. I think the uh, field or the end zone view is going to show you something good here. This is a section final, huge third down. This is a great catch if I remember right. I think it was on the front page of the newspaper. Throws behind him, I want to say. Yep. So that was stack. That was a slant right out, ran, ran out of. Uh, a stack formation, huge third down catch, confused the defense just a little bit and picked up a huge first down. There's our Colorado route. I tell kids not to rush this. You're gonna be open the more patient you are. You'll watch him here. He doesn't have to sell it too much. That defender, see, that defender, Squats and the ball's thrown outside. Colorado route, great throw and catch there. Down to the one. All right, so our three route, we'll run this quite a bit too. Uh, alignment without giving away an outside cutting route, especially from the wide receiver position. You don't want to cheat down enough to where all of a sudden it's like, no secret to anyone that you're going to run an outside cut. So you can manipulate that a lot with your stem. What good receivers will do is they'll sit on top of the numbers. So that DB's thinking, well, I'm going to shade inside. You stem him inside and you open yourself back up green grass. It's a great combination route uh, from the slot with a vertical on the edge. You clear that corner and then you're running an out route uh, on an outside edge defender, like a safety or outside linebacker. Again, a speed cut. Our first cut I teach at eight yards, expect the ball at 10. Do not drift. A variation is a shake. We haven't ran that just because we don't have enough time to protect it. Ran that a lot in college um, as a receiver. Show you some of that. I'm just gonna let this play, guys. Easy pitch and catch. If you rewind that, you can see his double cut speed cut. All right, our curl. Um, with a proper stem, a, uh, a curl alignment isn't as vital. Again, we're only going to run a curl from the outside position. Uh, I want, again, players to find the window defender pre-snap. I want them to understand where they're going to see, where they're going to see that football. Uh, it's a good combination. We oftentimes run curl and arrow. Arrow will bring that outside linebacker out of the picture, and that curl then opens up. It's basically like a deeper hitch. Uh, but with our curl, we try to sell post. I want them to drive on the post, then they beat that drum and come back almost like a hitch. It's not a candy cane route is what I call it. It doesn't look like a candy cane. It's that sharp post cut. Drive on the post for two or three steps, beat the drum, and then come back to the quarterback. We don't run a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of curls, or we didn't complete a whole bunch, I should say. Good curl there. Section final game. All right, our comeback route. I like this. We had a really mobile QB last year. He was one of the best athletes in the school. He was a point guard. He's actually going to go play uh, 
uh, Division II basketball. Really, really good athlete. Uh, he could run around, so we were able to do some some play action stuff, some rollout stuff, and a comeback's great for that. We didn't do it a whole bunch two years ago with a with a quarterback that wasn't as mobile, uh, but we ran the heck out of it last year. I wish I had some film on it from this last year, but. Um, play games with your alignment. Okay. Good corners are going to cheat based on your alignment. So don't give it away. Uh, it's usually a route that we run to the boundary. Uh, we won't go play action to the boundary. If we run it to the boundary, it'll be straight drop back. We'll zing it to the boundary. Um, we can run it to the field with, uh, with some rollout action, push vertical, establish leverage, never let the defender gain your outside shoulder ever. You're going to run your comeback right back into them. Okay. Uh, if you beat the defender near the line of scrimmage, okay, this is kind of a new terminology. You haven't busted it out yet, but again, your receiver guys are going to know what I'm talking about. I preach to my guys to stack the defender. All right. Just because you beat him at the line of scrimmage, or maybe you beat him in your route, right? I want you to work to get right back on top of him. So he's chasing you from straight behind you. All right. That's called a stack. We want to stack the defender. And again, it then makes it to where he doesn't know which direction you're going to go. All right. If you beat him to the outside and you run, well, he's going to take an angle to try to catch up to you. If he's right behind you chasing you, he doesn't know which direction you're going to make your cut. Okay. So if you beat a guy at the line of scrimmage or in your route, work to get back on top of him before you, before you complete your route and expect the football throttle down and drive, beat the drum at the top of the route, throttle back. You work back towards the sideline. We run our comebacks from 12 back to 10. Uh, expect the football away from the defender inside throws are no good. I preach that to the QBs. Um, and again, it's a great goal line route back to the pylon. And again, back to Adam Thielen, he runs a ton of that. There's a comeback straight drop back to the field. This was two minute drill in that game where we saw nothing but man coverage. You guys can go ahead and rewind that if you'd like. Here's your uh, end zone view. Dangerous defender there. Dangerous defender there. Probably a little long throw, especially for that quarterback's arm strength, but we got away with it. Uh, I'm not going to talk dig too much here. Dig is more pro style offense, more run and gun, run and shoot. I know Nick's working on a video for the run and shoot offense. I, I'm definitely going to be a viewer of that. Uh, I beg and I plead to, to implement a lot of that. I've, I've been hoping to go shotgun. Hopefully we can impl implement some of that this year too. But that up-tempo, sling it around, I absolutely love that stuff. Huge West Virginia football fan. They did it forever under Holgerson and Rodriguez. I love it. I love that stuff. But anyways, long story short, we don't run dig a whole bunch. There's not enough moving parts especially with speed to open up a dig row. We just don't have time to do it. Um, I'm just going to keep going. Our corner routes ran from the slot, never ran from the outside. Again, stem the defender. You want to maintain your leverage. Um, to know your angle of your, this should say corner cut, not post cut. Um, I tell my guys to feel the defender. If he's in your hip pocket, it's probably going to be an over the top throw. If you've got a lot of space or if he's above you, if he's higher than you, let's say you're running it against the safety. Oftentimes if you're in the slot, the safety is the guy that's going to be covering you up. If he's above you, expect a flatter throw. All right. Again, it's that football smarts. You have to understand, you know, even, even the angle of your, of your, uh, actually post cut is right. That means after cut, I'm sorry, after your cut, not the actual post route. <clears throat> flat versus high just talked about it stack if he's on top of you again use your eyes head and shoulder fakes we're not running around in sand our variations we call it a sting uh, versus very aggressive safeties just because we run a lot of hitch corner hitch corner hitch corner a safety is going to fly to take away that corner it's that corner post we call that a sting that goes back to college i think i've got some good video of some corner routes and some sting routes That's just a missed assignment. A backer should have carried him. Safety couldn't get there, no way in heck.
He's one of these two guys. This guy passes him off. His safety doesn't play it. And he's wide open. First game of the year last year. We caught them by surprise by throwing it. They'll be uh, a lot more prepared this year. They were, they were prepared last year. They beat us last year. They called this incomplete. I'm still sending it in to ESPN. I, I, the kid told me he caught the ball. I'm going to go back. This is our corner post. And we ran it from the wing position right here. So he's going to lean corner and he's getting all the way across the formation. Call that a sting. So in the future, and this is where I can get better, right? You could run that out of a better formation to where we've got a receiver here. He could run a simple hitch. He could run a go route. I'd probably put him on a hitch to occupy this guy. This is your backside corner with no responsibility whatsoever. So he actually is the closest guy to playing this. Imagine if this guy isn't here, how wide open this is. I mean, he'd run away from the defenders and we wouldn't have to try to fit it in there, but I swear it was a catch. No catch though. The mud homecoming game. Ah, uh, watch this now. I think this is a, I think I put this in here because this kid runs the wrong route. Yep. Here's what I mean now. And this is what I can't stomach as a coach. If I go back, this is hitch corner. Called it from the sidelines. Yelled it to him, zero seven, zero seven, zero seven. Hitch corner. Corner's absolutely wide open if this kid's on a hitch. This kid doesn't know what's going on, and he carries his defender right into the interception. Watch this. Yikes. That's a missed assignment. Hitch, corner, hitch, corner. He runs upfield, does nothing, carries this defender right into the interception. What I like about this, here's this kid. Okay, so again, not to talk about Elliot Peterson too much here, but again, he was our best playmaker. This safety is so far inside, but look, he still looks to stem him, lean inside, just so this kid sets his boots and, and he sinks his hips, thinking that, oh my gosh, this kid might be on a post. It just opens it up that much more. Watch how he leans in. Stem, 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 boom. Should have never been an interception, right? All right, post route alignment. I noticed many opponents would give inside outside cut based on alignment. So again, play games with that. Uh, push vertical, establish leverage. You want to get inside. You want to beat him inside. Uh, the stem could be to either shoulder with proper head and eyes. Um, I love when, when kids run a post and stem the outside shoulder because then that corner will turn his hips enough to be able to beat him to the inside. If you stem the inside shoulder, you can get into trouble with the safety play in the middle of the field. Again, stack the defender if you beat him near the line of scrimmage. Try to locate that safety. Are you going to get the ball out of your cut, or is it going to be an over the throw, over the top throw? Again, that's... That's what you got to pick up. If I'm on an eight route and I'm a receiver, realistically, I should look where that safety is, right? Uh, versus a cover three safety, you're going to run more of a skinny post versus sharper angle. If the backside tight end is on a vertical, then your post turns into a more flat concept. Again, football IQ. Called this one out of a timeout. We were in this formation. Um, the play before, and uh, we ended up calling a timeout. And I knew that this kid could win. So he's going to run right by this outside backer, and this safety doesn't have a chance. See how aggressive that safety was? It's too late. Good throw and good catch. 
That was early in the football game. So again, same formation. This kid was up near the line of scrimmage. Then we called a timeout. I said, all right, we got to beat him over the top of the post. That's exactly what happened. Great throw and catch. All right, I'm going to wrap this stuff up, guys. I've been talking for close to an hour here. Hopefully you got some use out of this. Um, so our go route, I call it a fade from the edge. I call it a seam from the inside. Okay, you guys have your own lingo. Again, not reinventing the wheel here, but stacking the defender is huge if you beat him within five yards of the line of scrimmage. If you know the ball isn't going to get there for another second or two, it shouldn't if the quarterback sees that you're hip to hip, but um, work to stack, work to stack, work to stack. Landmarks, landmarks, landmarks. Had so much trouble with this. Even last year, we'd be on four wide and we've got two kids, you know, run into the numbers or two kids run into the hash. Landmarks, landmarks, landmarks. Give your quarterback some room to throw. Okay, if you're on the edge, you need to, you, you can't be running uh, a very good go route if you're on the top of the numbers. If you're going to start on the top of the numbers, you better stack, you better work inside, you better leave that quarterback good sideline to throw. You should never get ran out of bounds, ever. Um, and then I teach fade late. Uh, this is one one of the things that I picked up my junior year of college too from that same offensive coordinator that was all about the uh, the greatest show on turf, the uh, the St. Louis Rams. Instead of drifting to the spot, even though you've got a guy beat, I want to stay shoulder to shoulder with him as long as possible, and I want to fade to the football as late as possible. It's totally unnatural. Super unnatural. High school kids, it's super hard. In college, I remember it was super hard to get used to. Because if you beat a guy right, you just want to drift to where the ball's going to be and you want to catch the ball. Well, if you drift to where the ball's going to be and a guy's got good makeup speed, he's going to make up that, uh, that lost ground and he's going to knock the ball away or make a play on it. If I'm running hip to hip with a defender, right, and I fade as late as possible, he can't defend it. If the throw's to the outside shoulder and I fade as late as possible, late as possible, on my outside shoulder, your body is between the defender and the football. You can't defend it. Okay, so I preach fade late. Make it easy on the quarterback. We ran the heck out of nine routes last year. Two years ago, not a ton. This was coming out of halftime in the section final. Notice backside, their outside linebacker really didn't carry our tight end when he was on a route. This guy right here. Fit it in there nice, right, under, right underneath the safety's chin. So again, a vertical concept. Quarterback did a good job moving the safety with his eyes. He looked field side, came back to the boundary. Motion to back out. This kid was a really good football player. Two guys in the rights. Look, watch now. Look at Frustrated. Okay, so this is a running back. Uh, he's going to be a skill type guy in college. I think he's playing at the University of Sioux Falls. Uh, he's two years ago graduate. Kid rushed for like 1,500 yards. Really, really good runner. Here's our tight end that caught a ball earlier. They're going to end up way too close to each other. This kid should be bottom of the numbers. Get out of there. This kid should work to get back to the hash. Landmarks, landmarks, landmarks. Look. That's too tight for my liking right there. These two guys are too close. If there's a defender in there, he could play either of them. Good catch. Big gain on third and 13. Gave ourselves a manageable fourth down. Bad throw by the quarterback, but he just ran right by him. Show you that one again. Look at, here it is. Good, good one to end on. Look at the stack, or uh, look at the stem. Stems them inside. This kid's square to the quarterback. Okay, this kid's this kid's in better defensive position for my liking, right? His feet are square to the to the receiver. Look at this kid, how he's angled inside. So our receiver again, one of our better playmakers. 
he has to get this kid's attention to the inside. If he just runs here, kid turns, flips his hips and plays it. Watch what happens. So watch how this kid, see that? And the kid's lost. Bad throw by the quarterback. If that throw is in the back corner of the end zone, it, it doesn't stand a chance, but I just like, oh, I'm gonna pause it one more time. Just show it to you one more time, then we'll be done. Get his attention, stem him inside, kid jumps it. It's over. Throw almost took him back into the play, but. And there it is. So that's our that's our go route. So there's there's a ton of a ton of technical stuff that I that I walked you through. Um, I would love to answer emails. Like the, the technical aspect of all of this stuff is what I love the most. And our head coach oftentimes tells me, "Hey, coach, they're high school kids, you know." And that maybe just comes from playing or whatever. But I absolutely love just the the small little technicalities of of route running and conceptual football. And I just love that. So. On that opening slide, if you guys want to go all the way back, my email's listed there. Absolutely, get a hold of me. Uh, this is this is pretty cool that that um, Nick reached out and allowed me to to put something together. Just because, uh, and I think even with the last couple of months here, uh, the whole coaching world has gotten a lot closer, and and people have reached out and connected themselves and learned a lot of things. And you know, it's it's by people that you don't know that you form relationships with. So. At any time, shoot me an email um, and we can talk and, uh, and I would love that. So 